I have been a fool, and I have broken a perfectly good ZX81. This one here. But like all good stories, we need to begin at the beginning. A big shout out and thank you to PCB Way for kindly sponsoring this video. With over 10 years in business, PCB Way specialise in low volume PCB production, whether that's through hole or surface mount or a combination of both. They also offer CNC machining and 3D printing services as well. With fast turnaround shipping and very competitive pricing, PCB Way make a great choice for your next project. So for those of you who have been watching some of my videos, you'll know that I have a couple of ZX81s. And I'd made a decision that one of them wasn't economically viably fixable. And from that, I'd read some of your comments and thought, well, perhaps you're right. I do need to, I can't, I can't just use it as a donor board. I do need to get it back up and working regardless. And so I got some bits ordered. I thought, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh everything and give it an extended lifespan. So all the things likely to fail or things that I've already found wrong, I'll replace it and get it up and working. Well, that is where everything started to go wrong. Like the giddy fool that I am, I ripped the machine open, pulled the motherboard out, and got to work with the soldering iron. So here's the board, and I'll just point out some, some things which may or may not be obvious. The ULA is currently missing. I've taken that out temporarily, and I've also removed the voltage regulator. Um, but other than that, I dived in, swapped the capacitors. There's another one on the other side that was swapped. I'll explain this wire in a minute. Swapped out the capacitors, swapped the connections. Didn't get as far as replacing the jacks. But then I swapped the transistors out, plugged it in. I thought, let's let's see how we're doing. Plugged it in, and all I got was a white screen. I'm like, oops, I've done something wrong. So I started retracing my steps, as you do. First things first, I flipped it over, checked all my soldering connections, made sure there were any shorts, and I found a couple of solder splashes, cleared those off. Happy days. Plugged it back in. Still white screen. Jeez, what have I done now? I then realised when I went and checked the transistors that I'd fitted them the wrong way around. Shouldn't cause a problem in terms of damaging anything. So I desoldered those and refitted them the correct way around. I thought it's bound to work now. Plugged it back in. I've still got a white screen, no cursor. I'm like, geez, what can it be? So I'm thinking one or two things. I've either messed something up or something that I've fitted is, is faulty. It, it's new, but it can happen. So I desoldered the transistors, took those back off, took the capacitors back off, checked those. Everything worked, as far as I could tell, absolutely fine. So I was quite happy that there was nothing wrong with any of the components. And then as I'm looking at particularly TR2, I realised that on the underneath here, and it's all a bit of a mess at the moment, this isn't, this isn't, uh, this is work in progress and I put a little fly lead on which I'll explain in a second a little jumper lead now I realized that I'd managed to lift some of the traces so 
quick repair in there. I don't know if you can see on there, but I did a quick repair on there. Replaced the trace that I'd managed to lift. And then I'm looking, and I couldn't find anywhere that the collector goes from. I couldn't find any trace of a connection from the collector on TR2 to anywhere else on the board. Completely missing. I don't know how I've managed to erase it, but nevertheless, I couldn't find anything for it. So, I got the schematic up, had a look at it, and apparently, TR2, the collector, comes back to the resistor R5, which also has a connection to, I think, pin 6 of the CPU. <coughs> And I thought, right, okay, I can't work out where the trace is, so I'll just put a jump wire in. Go on the top of uh, R5 and connect straight up to the collector, and hence the jumper wire. Collected that up, and still white screen, no cursor. And at that point in time, it's like really late. I'm really tired, really quite fed up now, really annoyed with myself. And I'm thinking, I've just killed what was a perfectly good ZX81. Now, with a white screen and no cursor, it suggests to me that, for whatever reason, the ROM chip isn't doing what it's meant to be doing. And that is as far as I've got at this moment in time as I haven't had the chance to give this any further thought. It, I killed it, and I just put it away. Didn't have the time or the patience at that time to do anything more with it. So where did I go wrong? Well, clearly I don't know yet, because otherwise it wouldn't be broken. However, two mistakes I think that I did make is, number one is... I replaced just about everything all in one go rather than doing one bit at a time and testing each time. Then if it doesn't work, I can know exactly where to go to. Second thing is I realized after the event that I was running my solder on iron too hot. I was running it at about 400 degrees, whereas normally I'd have it down at about 340. And that was a mistake. And it was a mistake because I'd been doing some other soldering prior to that and I'd left it to 400. I needed the hotter temperature and I forgot to turn it back down. And these little boards can be quite fragile. It's quite easy to lift the traces as I've demonstrated myself. And any excess heat is not going to do it any good whatsoever. So the cooler you can run your soldering iron, then the better. The better, uh, the better for the board and the less risk of uh, damaging something. So with all that said and done, and me making a complete ass of myself, breaking a perfectly good machine, my plan is as follows. I am going to get a new LA, ULA for this. I've decided that I too can live with the idea of just leaving it as a donor machine. So there will be a repair video. I'm hoping I can fix it. I hope you'll forgive me for making such a mess of this, but I want you guys to see the journey that I go through, the mistakes that I make, and hopefully you can learn from my mess-ups and avoid having these problems yourself. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video on my mess up and I hope you'll enjoy the video that I'll be doing sometime from now where hopefully we get this fixed and I have two working ZX81s. Bye for now.